For the longest time, those of us who have been tracking and talking about the culture war have referred to the far leftists as intersex- intersectionalists, SJWs, the far left, the woke left, etc. In recent times, though, that group has now shielded itself using the name Black Lives Matter. Of course, there is an overlap. And there are many Black Lives Matter leaders, organizers, who are overtly Marxist and say as much and adhere to woke intersectionalism. A lot of people's understanding of what Black Lives Matter is and how it started has nothing to do with the woke far left. It's it's, it's something I talk about quite a bit. Now, unfortunately, I'm sorry, man. Black Lives Matter has now become an official brand of intersectionalism. And when you reference Black Lives Matter, the average person is now going to start thinking of violent riots. They're going to start thinking of ideas like white privilege. But if you take a look at some of the original activists, the, the original messaging, or something like you know Dave Chappelle would say, the big concern was about the violations of a person's civil liberties. Typically, these protesters feel that the police were disproportionately killing unarmed black Americans. I'm going to stop right there and just say straight up, listen, man, if you come to me and say that here's a, here's a story about a person whose civil liberties were violated, that an agent of the state in some capacity killed them and it was unjust, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm on board. To- totally, let's figure out what this problem was. I'm all about freedom and, and we cannot be a free country if people are being are, are having their rights violated. I'm totally down for that conversation. So when I hear Dave Chappelle talk about it, I'm like, right on, right on, man. I, I, I hear you. And, and there's, there's a lot of whataboutism, but the bigger problem, in my opinion, is the hijacking of the of the issue. Now, of course, many original Black Lives Matter activists are fully on board with far leftism and all that stuff. But let's even just remove the brand name and say, listen, I don't care what your color is. I don't care where you come from. If somebody kills you and it's on un, it's un, an unjust killing, I want justice. All right. That means if it's the police or anybody else. So I'm down to listen to these stories. But now we are seeing kind of a wave of black community leaders expressing their disdain and their anger over what's going on with the hijacking of Black Lives Matter, or more importantly, just their cause fighting against police brutality. I got this story from the AP from today. Violence Mars Portland protests frustrates the black community. How about this story from from the Chaz? Members of African-American Council are booed as they tell protesters in Seattle's autonomous zone that they've hijacked the Black Lives Matter movement. Check this out. BBC bans Black Lives Matter badges after a campaign accused of hijacking George Floyd's death for political reasons. Yeah, it stands to reason. There are good Americans in this country of all colors who are frustrated that a fringe far left economic and cultural ideology, a non-theistic religion, are trying to manipulate race relations in order to make some kind of political changes to this country. And of course, I bring you this. Check out this poll. Three in four voters and a majority of black Americans oppose tearing down Mount Rushmore. Now, the conversations about tearing down Mount Rushmore aren't like, I don't want to say they're expansive like they're everywhere, but the activists are getting more and more press attention because the woke left has allies in media and the media is desperate for some kind of narrative. While I don't necessarily know if we need to be talking about protecting Mount Rushmore for the most part, it is a conversation that's creeping up. Let me, let me clarify what, I'm, what I mean by that. 99.9% of Americans are probably not talking about tearing down Mount Rushmore, but the friend ele- fringe elements of the left are. And unfortunately, many of them are in positions of power. What's disconcerting to me is that we have seen Columbus statues removed in places like Columbus, Ohio. What? And through no Democratic vote, the government was just like, oh, we better remove this statue of our own city's namesake. What? <laughs> Are you going to change your name too? The absurdity is that the far left can come out. They're a fringe element, not voted. N- nobody elected them. And they scream until you tear down something down. And then instead of having an actual co- uh, you know, city council meeting, the, 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 the executors, the executives of these, of these cities just go, okay, whatever the far left wants. That's the problem. That's why this poll is actually very important. Because you know what you'd find in this country? I think the fact that we can see that there are white people, that there are black people, that there are Asian people, Latinos on both the left and the right arguing over this proves it is not about race. If if a white leftist 
can argue to a black conservative and tell them they're wrong. Clearly, the issue is not the race of the people. It's the ideology. And thus, we are going to see more and more stories from about members of the black community angry that these revolutionary type young people are trying to stage a revolution. They're rioting. That's exactly what's happening. My utmost respect to any one of these groups that wants to fight for for justice uh, when they're facing a perceived threat. And I really do mean perceived because I'll tell you this right now. There's a lot of arguments that I see online where they say, oh, you know, uh, not that many unarmed black men were actually killed last year. And I'm like, I hear you. However, one's too many. One, one is too many. And of course, there are unarmed innocent white people and Latinos and, pe- and Asians, people of all different backgrounds, Middle Eastern people, whatever, Indians, Native American. I mean, literal India not try- and Native Americans. You give me any story and say, check this video out. These cops cross the line and I'll be like, let me know what you need because I am not OK with the with the state killing people. I'm against the death penalty. So it's like, uh, so listen, if someone comes to me and they say, I'm concerned about members of my own community being killed, I'll be like, right on. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to immediately say like, well, what about these other groups? I'll be like, hey, let's put together a list of people who have been unjustly harmed and figure out what we can do to, to get justice in this matter. And that means there's going to be a lot of fervent activists on all sides who want their issue addressed first. You know what? I, it's, it's a tough conversation, but I don't know how you prioritize who's more deserving of immediate action. And this is one of the big problems, in my opinion, with the actual, the, the, the general Black Lives Matter idea where they say that Black Lives Matter need help more than other lives. And it's where I can actually understand the idea that all lives matter. But listen, my, my reaction to Black Lives Matter would not be to say all, uh, to go up to them and say all lives matter. I'd say, I'd say right on, man. Let me let me know who these people are. There, there are some other people that have lost their lives too. other groups are concerned. I'm not going to pretend that anyone is more or less deserving of, of, of timeliness in resolving these. I just hope anybody, regardless of your race, can understand why people really are like, this is my community. Somebody I, you know, somebody in my community died. Dude, death is shocking to people. So yeah, they're going to get heated. They're going to get emotional. That's why it's like, it, it kind of does bum me out that all lives matter is viewed so negatively by Black Lives Matter because we can just be like, hey, both like for for real, man, we're not going to ignore any one of these unjust killings just because there's uh, the word black or the word all. At least for me, I'm down with trying to help everybody out in this regard. Nobody should be killed in these circumstances. And I'm totally down for police reform. But let, let's, let's, let's actually read. Otherwise, I'll just keep ranting on this. What does the black community actually think about the violent revolutionaries? They're not too happy, it would seem. The AP reports, protesters in this liberal, predominantly white city have taken to the streets peacefully every day for more than five weeks to decry police brutality. But violence by smaller groups is dividing the movement and drawing complaints that some white demonstrators are co-opting the moment. As the Portland protests enter a second month, they have shifted on several nights from the city's downtown core to a historically black neighborhood in North Portland that's already buckling under the effects of white gentrification and has the most to gain or lose from the uh, outrage in the streets. Late last week, some protesters barricaded the doors of a police precinct a half block from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and set fire to the building, which also houses black owned businesses, including an Ethiopian restaurant and a barber school. Full stop. Ethiopian food. Amazing. You ever have it? It's like they, they, they have this big pancake. And they put all this like very well spiced meats on it. I got to say, really great stuff. I am, I am, outra- I'm just outraged in general at the vandalism and stuff, but I got to give a special shout out. How dare you burn down an Ethiopian restaurant? I love Ethiopian food. Tuna, I'm, I'm somewhat kidding. I mean, don't, vandalism is all bad. I, I like other food too. Two nights later, a potluck at a park in the heart of the black community morphed into another violent clash with police who unleashed tear gas to quell the crowd of several hundred people. On Friday, a Portland man was arrested for his role in an overnight attack on the Hatfield Federal Courthouse, U.S. Attorney Billy J. Williams said. Rowan M. Olson, 19, a.k.a. Kiefer Allen Moore, was arrested by the Federal Protective Services early Friday morning, he said in a news release. Olson is scheduled to appear in federal court on Monday, uh, Williams said. The change has angered and frustrated some in the black community who say a white fringe element is distracting from their message with senseless destruction in a city where nearly three quarters of the residents are white and less than 6% are black. I want to stop you right there. What are we hearing? 
The black community is speaking up saying we don't want revolution. They stop burning down, trying to burn down a courthouse. That's that's sad. That's that's frustrating to me because I'm listen, man. I don't if, 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 if you're a Trump supporter, if you're white, and you come to me and say, hey, man, look at this white, you know, this white guy who was killed by the cops. I'm going to be like, man, that's awful. Like, what can we do to solve this? And if you're Black Lives Matter, you come to me and say, look at these people, look at these people who are killed. I'll be like, that's terrible, man. We got to solve this. Let's 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 just let's figure out how to solve this. But then all of a sudden, if Antifa shows up, starts throwing fireworks, explosives, trying to burn down buildings and Black Lives Matter, actual members of the black community are saying, stop this. You're making it worse for us. I'm right there with you. Knock it off, man. The adults are having a conversation about people's civil liberties, man. We have a right. We have a Fifth Amendment right to due process and the right to remain silent, mind you, but due process, meaning if a police officer suspects you of a crime, they can't just kill you. So we got to figure out how to navigate these problems for everybody. And if you want to make the argument that one group is in more need than another, that's fine. I'm just letting you know, I'm going to do everything I can to allocate my time to help everyone. And I don't know who is more or less deserving. That's the big challenge. So I'm not going to try and make some argument about, oh, what about this group? I'll say, right on, man, I hear you. Let me know what you need from me because I'll speak up and say no to that stuff. But I'm, 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 I'm personally sick and tired of the faux whiny revolutionaries who think they're going to foment some Marxist revolution. Yes, there are minority individuals of all different races and, and, and creeds even who are a part of this new branded Black Lives Matter. But there are still, in my opinion, based on the data we've seen, a majority of Americans, be it white, Latino, black, Asian or otherwise, who do not want a revolution, who do love this country. And this, in my opinion, suggests that all of this violence and this anger is going to result in Donald Trump winning. Now, hold on. I'm not saying I think he's on track to win. I'm saying this can lend itself to a Donald Trump victory. I'm actually not. Well, you know what, man? Look, a lot of people have been claiming that I flip flopped a little bit. The reality is, yes, in the sense that news keeps changing and Trump really is on a thin, you know, on a fine line. I don't believe necessarily right now he has uh, averted his path towards defeat. For a long time, I thought he was going to landslide. It's not unusual. We had mass riots. Trump's approval was higher than ever. And then it tanked. And I said, wow, maybe he won't win. That's not like a hard flip flop. That's like, oh, his polling dropped. You know, his approval rating dropped. But think about this. There, there are still some signs that Trump has a decent potential. According to the primary election forecast model, 91%. 91%. But when you see members of the black community standing up and saying no to the far left, and Joe Biden is not calling this out, and Trump is the one giving this, this grandiose speech saying like, you know, America and all this, all this great stuff. I have to imagine there are people of all backgrounds saying, yes, please. You know, we, we've been winning this fight. And I really do mean it. The, the, the people who want civil liberties for all groups have continuously won. They're sharing this viral photo right now showing uh, the famous painting of the Declaration of Independence. And they're like, look how many people were slave owners. I'm like, yeah, and look how many of them lost. They created a country. They created a framework. And 100 years later or 80 years later or so, Frederick Douglass came out and said, look what you wrote. Look what you said. Are you going to de defend what you wrote? Aha. And he was right. 100%. We are all created equal. Individual be human beings. And we can have a discussion about animal rights too. But for now. Human beings, no matter what your, your background is, your race, your religion, your creed, your national origin, your identity, your orientation, we all have God-given inalienable rights. And if you're not religious, I'm not, you, you can take it figuratively. What it means is we are born into a world where no one else can tell us within reason because you don't want to, you, you can't infringe on other people's rights as well. Let's, let, let's read this. I'm going to show you this quote. Quote, this is not the Black Lives Matter movement. This is chaos. Kali Ladd, executive director of Kairos PDX, wrote in a Facebook post. These white actors are enacting dominance in a different form under the guise of equity. White supremacy has many forms. Here, here, brother. 100%. I keep saying it. These are people who are trying to pretend like they care about racism. What they really want is destruction. The, I don't think any of these Antifa people have any idea what they're actually fighting for. What do you want to call them? They just want to burn everything down. And they're doing it in the name of people who are trying to fight for for justice. That's 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 that to me is particularly annoying. Now, I'm not going to speak on behalf of, of the actual Black Lives Matter movement. 
or its organizers, they're not unified. But I, I tell you this, man, seriously, if you watch Dave Chappelle's stand up routine, it wasn't really even, I don't even know if it was stand up, and it was called 846. He's not talking about Marxism or taxes or Amazon or any of these weird far lefty things. He's talking about people who were killed and that if we don't figure out how to solve this, you're going to have retaliation. He's right. You, you don't have to agree with him to hear what he has to say. But I tell you this, man, I loved what Dave Chappelle talked about because it was, it was an articulated thought that maybe it's wrong. I know some people disagreed, but it doesn't matter. Are you going to hear out this guy? He's clearly not on board with cancel culture. He has something to say. And maybe he's wrong. I'm going to hear him out. Let's have a conversation about it and move forward with these things and figure out how we can make people feel better in this country. There's a limit to how much I'm willing to actually placate your feelings. You know what I mean? But within reason, I want to know why you feel the way you do, because we see a lot of really angry people and sometimes they're wrong and we can solve that and make them feel better by just talking to them, giving them the facts and then maybe, you know, maybe we'll learn something, too, if we're willing to to uh, to listen. Maybe. Look, I'll tell you this, man. When you see a lot of angry people because of the far left lunatics, I think there's an immediate reaction to be like these people are nuts. They're all crazy. Yes. The Antifa people, for sure. But there are littered within any one of these protests, real people with real concerns and real grievances. And you'll find them. Unfortunately, that message is drowned out totally by the woke intersectionalism that's just been taking over. So how do we navigate that? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, what we want. We want this. We want this. Three in four voters, majority of black Americans oppose tearing down Mount Rushmore. Right on. There were two other polls showing the majority of Americans have a positive view of All Lives Matter. All Lives Matter doesn't need to be a counter statement. And so I think there are people, there, there's a couple phrases that have popped up. Black Lives Matter too and all black lives matter and all, you know, whatever. There, 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 there's got to be some kind of attempt at unity that we don't need to be arguing with each other because now you've got black lives matter, you got all lives matter, you got blue lives matter. You know what, man? Life matters. Life matters completely. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of moral questions and ethical conundrums, particularly like uh, pro-choice versus pro-life. But we got to be able to sit down and talk about how we move forward and protect the best of our abilities, each other. Here's the problem. I think we're entering a point where it, we're not going to be able to, right? L let me make sure I go back and get some, some of the full context here. They say, here's another quote. It has nothing to do with helping black people. These hoodlums are needlessly scaring neighbors and their children, said Ron Herndon, who has fought for racial justice in Portland for four decades and led a school boycott in 1979 after the city closed predominantly black schools. At some point, enough is enough. Here, here, man. I'm, I'm, I, have, I have tremendous respect for these people to finally call out the, 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 these zealous fringe lunatics. How many of the media woke leftists, their allies, the lunatics allies, have pretended like looting was some kind of beneficial thing? It's a lie. I've seen it over and over again. It is a lie. They say in defense of looting. Not kidding. Google search that phrase in defense of looting. And they try and justify the destruction and chaos wreaked upon these marginalized communities by acting as though they're actually defying the system. No, they don't come. They come from other places. The looters and the rioters, the extremists, the zealots, they have hijacked what this cause was supposed to be about. And now it's working. The Democrats are bending the knee. Major corporations are bending the knee when in reality, the real movement is about, hey, man, some people lost their lives when they shouldn't have. And the police should be held accountable when they do this. And that's that's true there. They're, I'm, I'm totally down with reform. I am absolutely not down with demonizing the entirety of our of our police force across the country because so many cops are trying their hardest. But these extremists want to do that because they just want to watch it all burn. They want their stupid faux revolution, man the zealots. I wish they could get a taste of the world they so craved because people don't want what they're selling. They're just hijacking it. Look at this quote. People in that neighborhood were upset. That's not something they're going to tolerate. And they came out and were very vocal, Level said. I think people sometimes look at the protest movement as one homogenous group. And there's definitely a segment here that is very violent. Absolutely. The Rose City justice marches and rallies attracted a diverse crowd of 10,000 people a night at one point. High school students marched arm in arm. Just we get it. So uh, you, you, you get the point, right? We also have this story I covered from from the Chaz where African-American council members were actually booed by these people. You know, man, 
I'm uh, I'm just I'm I'm si I'm sick of this this insanity. It's it's this weird Marxist. It's this weird intersectionalism, and they absolutely have hijacked what regular Americans have been asking for, and they're manipulative too. That they're getting a ton of people angry with fake news and lies. I was in Ferguson, and, I, and I, this story is so important. A group of young black men were linking arms to protect a li the liquor store, the famous liquor store on on, on Florissant, where this all started. They were protecting it from looters. And when they were interviewed, they said, the people looting don't live here, man. They're destroying our neighborhood. We don't want this. Take a look at what happened in Atlanta when the looters went around destroying all the businesses downtown and a bunch of high profile black celebrities were saying, what are you doing to our community? And that makes me so angry, man. It makes me angry that under the guise of actually fighting against racism, they destroy marginalized communities. That's what makes me angry. When I see people on the, on the far left, these anti people yelling racial slurs and they're white people doing it, I'm like, it's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the craziest thing. And I've told this to so many people, those who are willing to listen. Why is it that when I talk to Trump supporters, race isn't an issue? It's not. It's, it's, just, it's just not there. Why is it that when I'm in Portland, I see a proud boy, supposedly this far right racist group, the dude's black. And, and who was calling him racial slurs? Antifa, the far left wearing all black, screaming at the top of their lungs. This dude got mad. And it was other proud boys who were white who stopped him, shook his hand, gave him a hug and told him not, not to be baited by them because we're all in this together. I'm like, what, what, what is this? These people are insane. They're absolutely, I, I don't know. It's, it's just, I'm, I'm tired of calling them insane. But it's true. They're nasty people and they're, and they're trying to hijack this. And unfortunately, the, these major brands, these major corporations are just giving them what they want. And you know what? Unfortunately, they do have allies of all different races and creeds who are these weird intersectionalists who have been able to hijack the movement because they're high profile. They screech the loudest. But regular Americans don't want this. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not convinced the answer is necessarily Donald Trump. But I'll tell you this, it's certainly not Joe Biden. I don't know how we solve how we solve these problems, man. But we've got a fringe element of a tiny fraction of this country who are extremely vocal and they are dominating the conversation and they are drowning out the people who actually care. The people who are white, who are black, who are Latino, who are Asian, who agree with each other on, yeah, we got problems. We're a pretty great country. We don't want a revolution. We just want things to be a little bit better. We always do. But if these people get their way, things will get a whole lot worse. So it's important to keep calling them out. So my respect to those, those activists and members of the black community who have stood up to defend their rights. And I'm definitely always down to listen and try and figure out the best way we can come together to solve our problems. But it's, the, it's these faux revolutionary uh, intersectionalists that are causing all of the problems. They are in media. They are creating a false sense of reality. They're trying to manipulate. We can't let them do this. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at TimCast.net. Happy 4th of July, and I will see you all then.